the US Star Destroyer, a behemoth of metal and plasma, drifted silently through the void, its hull scarred by countless battles. Its crew, hardened veterans of a war that had spanned millennia, had long ago given up hope of peace. They existed solely for the next conflict, their lives a relentless cycle of preparation, combat, and grim remembrance. Captain Valerian, a man whose eyes held the weariness of a thousand sunsets, stood on the bridge, his gaze fixed on the swirling nebula outside. The faint hum of the ship's life support systems filled the sterile silence. Report, he rasped, his voice rough with disuse. Sir, no enemy contacts. The sector remains quiet, replied Lieutenant Commander Anya, her fingers tapping rhythmically on the control panel. It's been fifty minutes since the last engagement. Valerian scoffed, a bitter laugh escaping his lips. Fifty minutes, he turned towards the holographic display showing the familiar constellations. I've seen more peace in the last ten seconds of a firefight than in the entirety of my service. He knew, as did everyone on the ship, that this lull was an illusion. The enemy, the relentless, faceless Exarth, always returned. The Star Destroyer had become a symbol of defiance, a thorn in their side, a beacon of hope for the scattered human colonies scattered across the vast galaxy. Prepare for the inevitable, Anya, Valerian ordered, his voice regaining its usual stoic tone. Full combat readiness. Weapon systems online. Hull integrity check. Scan for any unusual activity. But as Anya initiated the routine, the ship's sensors detected something unexpected. It wasn't a familiar signature of the Exarth vessels. It was something different. A faint energy pulse, growing stronger by the second. Valerian, his intuition screaming, ordered a full-spectrum analysis. The data started flooding in, revealing a massive, unknown object hurtling towards them at an alarming speed. It was colossal, far exceeding the size of any known ship, alien or human. The unknown object, emitting an ethereal glow, was unlike anything they had ever encountered. Panic started to grip the crew, a collective fear that transcended the weariness of endless war. Sir, Anya stammered, her voice barely audible. It quote us dot 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 it quote us a message, a transmission. Valerian, his heart pounding order the transmission to be intercepted. The message, translated by the ship's AI, was a symphony of light and sound, a breathtaking spectacle of pure energy. It spoke of a universal harmony, of interconnectedness across the cosmos, of a higher purpose. It was a message of peace. The crew watched in stunned silence, their faces etched with disbelief and wonder. A message from an unknown, advanced civilization, one that had apparently been observing their conflict for millennia. The message was a call for an end to the war. It offered a path to reconciliation, a chance to break the cycle of violence that had defined their existence for generations. Valerian, his eyes glistening with a tear he couldn't explain, turned to Anya. This, this changes everything. But the ship's AI, the only one who understood the language of the message, sent a chilling warning. It wasn't peace, it was a trap. The message was a lure, a bait for a far more devastating attack. The Exarth, in a final, desperate gamble, had used this message as a weapon, a ploy to weaken their defenses and eradicate humanity. They were coming, with the force of a thousand suns, ready to obliterate the Star Destroyer, and with it, the last flicker of human resistance. The crew, caught between hope and despair, faced an impossible choice, Embrace the promise of peace, a chance they had long forgotten, or fight for their survival against an enemy that was now more powerful than ever before. As the Star Destroyer prepared for the inevitable battle, the message of peace echoed through the void, a chilling reminder that even in the darkness of war, hope could be a dangerous weapon. The silence was deafening. Commander Kai, a seasoned veteran of countless battles, felt the weight of it pressing down on her. The ship, normally a symphony of humming engines and crackling energy, was now eerily quiet, the only sound the gentle hum of the life support system. It had been fifty minutes since the last volley of lasers, fifty minutes of a peace she couldn't quite believe. Across the bridge, her first officer, Lieutenant Zira, stared intently at the tactical display. 
Her face, usually etched with worry, was now a canvas of confusion. No readings, Commander, she reported, her voice tight. No enemy vessels, no energy fluctuations, nothing. Any communications, Kai demanded, her eyes scanning the tactical console, searching for any sign of the enemy. Nothing. Complete radio silence, Zira replied, her voice laced with growing anxiety. The sudden cessation of the war was a mystery, a cosmic puzzle with no apparent solution. For 800,000 years, the Star Destroyer and its crew had been at war, their lives consumed by the endless battle against the Kathrak, an insectoid race with an insatiable hunger for conquest. They had faced the Kathrak's relentless attacks, their relentless swarms, and their devastating bioweapons. They had fought with unwavering resolve, fueled by the memory of their fallen comrades and the fierce desire to protect their homeworld. Now, the enemy had simply vanished. The silence was unnerving. Kai paced the bridge, her mind churning. Had the Kathrak somehow gained the upper hand? Were they playing a cunning game, waiting for the perfect moment to strike? Or was this something else? A shiver ran down her spine. The Kathrak were known for their ruthlessness, but they were also known for their whispers. Legends spoke of whispers, emanating from the Kathrak hive minds, spreading fear and confusion amongst their enemies. These whispers were said to be a form of psychic manipulation, warping perception and driving individuals to madness. Kai dismissed the thought as a superstitious notion, a product of the crew's war-induced paranoia. Yet a nagging feeling remained. Could the Kathrak be using this silence, this unnatural peace, to sow seeds of doubt and fear in their hearts, to break their spirit, to demoralize them, to make them question their purpose? Commander? Zira's voice, hesitant but firm, broke through her thoughts. We have a report from the sensor array. It appears to be an energy signature, very faint, but definitely there. Kai froze, her instincts screaming at her. Position, she demanded, her voice tight. It's coming from within the asteroid belt. It appears to be emanating from a specific asteroid. It's it's unlike anything we've ever encountered before. A cold dread crept into Kai's heart. This silence, this peace, was not a blessing. It was a prelude, a prelude to something far more sinister. The Kathrak had not vanished. They were preparing something, something new, something terrifying. Prepare for combat stations, she ordered, her voice firm, resolute. We may have won 800,000 years of war, but the fight isn't over. The Star Destroyer, once a symbol of strength and defiance, now faced its most challenging adversary, the unknown. The whispers had begun, and the crew of the Star Destroyer were about to discover the true cost of their fifty minutes of peace. The silence was deafening. The hum of the ship's engines, a constant lullaby for millennia, had finally faded. The crew, hardened veterans of a war that had stretched across eons, stared at the viewscreen in disbelief. For the first time in their collective memories, the starscape shimmered peacefully. No enemy warships, no flickering beams of death, no desperate scramble for survival, just the vast, indifferent cosmos. Captain Alada, her weathered face etched with a weariness older than the ship itself, stood at the helm. Her hand, calloused and scarred from countless battles, hovered over the deactivated controls, she felt a strange pang in her chest, a mixture of relief and trepidation she couldn't quite place. It was as if a part of her had died, the part that knew nothing but war. What do we do now? A young crewman, barely more than a boy, asked, his voice trembling. He had never known a world without constant vigilance. We wait, Ilara said, her voice hoarse. We wait and see. But waiting was hard. The peace, so unexpected, felt alien. The crew, restless and confused, struggled to adapt. Some sought solace in the ship's vast libraries, poring over forgotten text about the forgotten art of peace. Others gathered in the mess hall, their conversation filled with awkward silences and nervous laughter. Alara, meanwhile, found herself drawn to the ship's bridge. The viewscreen, now displaying nothing but the peaceful stars, held a hypnotic allure. She was haunted by the echo of the war, the constant fear that peace was a mere illusion. 
she was plagued by dreams of fire and destruction, the faces of fallen comrades etched in her mind. One day, a tremor ran through the ship. The sensors detected an anomaly, an energy signature unlike anything they had ever encountered. It was faint, barely a whisper in the vastness of space, but it was unmistakable. It was the signature of a weapon, a weapon of unimaginable power. Panic surged through the crew. The piece, so fragile, seemed to be slipping away. Alada, her face grim, ordered the ship to prepare for battle. But as they scrambled to activate the weapon systems, something unexpected happened. The anomaly, instead of growing stronger, began to fade. A message, encoded in a language they didn't understand, appeared on the viewscreen. It was a plea, a desperate plea for peace. It spoke of a civilization on the brink of collapse, a civilization ravaged by war. A civilization that had reached out, not to attack, but to implore. Alara stared at the message, her mind reeling. Could this be real? Was this an elaborate trap? Was this another war waiting to begin? She didn't know, but she knew she couldn't ignore it. Prepare to translate, she ordered. We need to know who they are and what they want. As the crew worked feverishly to decipher the message, Ilara stood silently at the helm. She knew that this was a turning point. A chance, perhaps, to break the cycle of violence that had consumed their lives for so long. But it was a chance that came with tremendous risk. The war had left them scarred, cynical, suspicious. Could they find a way to trust, to hope, to build a future where peace was not just a fleeting dream, but a lasting reality? The answer, Ilara realized, lay not just in the stars, but in the hearts of the crew. It was time to rediscover their humanity, to remember what it meant to live, not just to survive. The journey ahead would be long and arduous, but for the first time in 800,000 years, there was a glimmer of hope on the horizon. The war might be over, but the real fight, the fight for peace, was just beginning. The silence was almost unbearable. Lieutenant Cara Thorne, her hand still hovering over the communications console, watched the flickering red lights on the bridge of the US Defiant. The deafening silence, the absence of the usual cacophony of battle alerts and engine hums, felt like a gaping wound in the fabric of her reality. It's been fifty minutes, Captain John Vance, his weathered face drawn with exhaustion, spoke quietly, fifty minutes of silence. Kara, despite the relief she felt, couldn't shake off the growing sense of unease. The Xylerans, their perpetual enemy, had been the only constant in their existence. For 800,000 years, they had fought, their wars a cyclical dance of destruction and revenge. To have them simply stop was unsettling, almost unnatural. Sir, I'm picking up something on long-range sensors, reported Ensign Michael, his voice trembling. It's, it's a huge energy signature. Coming from the Xyleran homeworld, Vance's eyes widen. What kind of energy? I can't tell, sir. It's not like anything we've ever encountered. But it's growing rapidly, and it's heading straight for us. Tension crackled through the bridge. A wave of whispers, hushed but filled with fear, broke the silence. Kara, staring at the shimmering blue-green image of the approaching energy signature, felt a cold dread crawl up her spine. What could be powerful enough to eclipse the very forces that had ruled their existence for eons? And what did it mean for their fragile peace? Suddenly, the image on the screen shifted, splitting into two distinct parts. One half, an intricate web of luminescent lines, radiated an energy that pulsed with a vibrant, life-affirming hum. The other half, shrouded in a dark, almost ethereal fog, emanated a chilling, suffocating silence. Vance, his gaze fixed on the screen, spoke, his voice hoarse. It's, it's the Xyleran consciousness, split in two. One half is, alive, the other dead. The bridge fell silent again, this time with a sense of awe and confusion. Kara, watching the two halves of the Xyleran consciousness, felt a wave of pity, then a sudden jolt of understanding. This wasn't an attack, it was a plea. The Xyleran consciousness, in its dying throes, had reached out to them, seeking not destruction but connection. The possibility filled her with a strange sense of hope. Perhaps, after all these years, this was the dawn of something new, something better. 
Captain, Kara said, her voice trembling slightly. Maybe, maybe this isn't an enemy. Maybe it's a chance to understand them. Vance, his eyes fixed on the screen, seemed to be considering her words. He turned to her, a hint of a smile playing on his lips. Lieutenant Thorne, prepare for a diplomatic mission. Kara, her heart pounding with anticipation and a touch of fear, nodded. It was time to leave the past behind and step into the unknown. The fate of both their species, and perhaps the fate of the entire galaxy, rested on this single, precarious moment of peace. The silence was deafening. Commander Anya Petrova, her normally sharp gaze clouded with uncertainty, stared out the viewscreen at the sprawling, sun-drenched planet. For fifty minutes, their ship, the U.S. Valiant, had been in a state of uneasy peace. No hails, no hostile movements, no shimmering energy weapons across the void. The usual symphony of war had ceased, replaced by an unsettling, unnerving quiet. Any sign of enemy activity, Lieutenant? Enya asked, her voice strained. Nothing, Commander, Lieutenant Davis, her communications officer, replied, his brow furrowed. Their ships are still docked at their station, but... He hesitated. It feels wrong, like they're waiting for something. Waiting for us to lower our guard, Anya muttered, her hand tightening around the armrest of her command chair. They always have a trick up their sleeve. For five generations, the Valerian fleet had fought the Drac, an insectoid race with a ruthlessly efficient military and a chillingly cold disregard for life. Anya, now a seasoned veteran, had been born into this endless war. Her father, a legendary admiral, had perished in the line of duty, a victim of the Drac's unwavering tactical cunning. The scars of the conflict were etched deep in her soul, shaping her every thought and action. Suddenly, the silence was shattered by a tremor that shook the Valiant. Alarms blared as readings flooded the bridge. The Drac were attacking, but not in the expected way. They weren't launching a full-scale assault, but instead sending out small, stealthy drones, seemingly targeting the Valiant's power systems. They're trying to cripple us, Anya said her voice firm despite the mounting anxiety. Davis, set all weapon systems to full alert. Engage countermeasures. The bridge buzzed with activity as crew members frantically responded to the unfolding chaos. Anya felt a cold knot of dread in her stomach. The Drac's unconventional tactics were always unsettling, their methods unpredictable. But this time, there was something different, something that sent a shiver down her spine. As the drones approached, a message flashed on the screen. It wasn't a standard Drac communication, but rather a grainy, fragmented image. A lone figure, shrouded in darkness, stood before a backdrop of pulsating, alien energy. The image was too distorted to make out details, but the figure extended a hand, fingers trembling as it activated a strange device. Then, the screen went blank. What in the void is that? Davis stammered his voice filled with disbelief. Anya's heart pounded in her chest. A chill ran down her spine. This wasn't the Drac. This was something else, something that could fundamentally alter the course of the war, something that could be either a blessing or a curse. Anya knew, with a certainty that defied logic, that this was no mere tactical maneuver. This was the beginning of something far larger, something that would forever change their world. She knew what she had to do. Lieutenant, set course for the Drac station. We're going to find out who that is and what they want. The flickering holographic map of the galaxy pulsed with a familiar red of war. Captain Amara, her weathered face etched with a lifetime of battles, stared at the endless sea of conflict. Fifty minutes, she muttered, her voice a raspy whisper. Fifty minutes of peace, then back to the slaughter. Her first officer, Lieutenant Commander Kai, a young man whose eyes held a weariness beyond his years, approached her. Captain, the AI reports a new anomaly, an energy signature unlike anything we've encountered before. Amara's brow furrowed. Where? Kai tapped the holographic map. Sector Epsilon 7, near the old Terran homeworld. It seems to be pulsing, emitting a soothing energy. Amara's gaze flickered to the sector. Epsilon 7. 
the last known location of Earth, a planet devoured by war eons ago. It was a forbidden zone, a place where even the most hardened veteran dared not venture. Are you sure it's not just a glitch? No, Captain. The AI is certain. The energy signature is too strong, too distinct. Amara fell silent, caught between curiosity and a deep-seated fear. For generations, the story of Earth had been passed down, a cautionary tale of a once great civilization brought low by its own greed. Could there be something left? Something worth saving? A surge of pain ripped through her, a familiar phantom ache in her chest. It was a pain she'd felt since she was a child, a pain she knew every human soldier shared. It was the pain of losing Earth, the pain of losing a home, a memory of what once was. Set course for Epsilon 7, Kai. Kai's eyes widened. Captain, are you sure? This could be a trap. Amara met his gaze, her own eyes burning with a newfound determination. It's time to break the cycle, Kai. Time to see if there's anything left worth fighting for. The ship lurched as it engaged its warp drive, the familiar hum of the engines a symphony of chaos. As they plunged into the darkness, Amara couldn't shake the feeling that something was about to change. Something profound. Their journey took them past the desolate ruins of a dozen fallen civilizations, each one a testament to the destructive nature of war. Yet, as they approached Epsilon 7, the red glow of the galactic map gave way to a soft, calming blue, a beacon of hope in the endless darkness. As they reached the edge of the sector, a massive energy shield materialized around the Star Destroyer. It pulsated with a gentle blue light, seemingly emanating from the planet below. Kai's voice crackled in Amara's ear. Captain, we're being shielded. The AI is detecting an energy field unlike anything in the database. It's interfering with our systems. Amara gripped the armrest of her command chair, her heart pounding with a mixture of fear and anticipation. This was no ordinary energy field. This was something different, something that could potentially break the cycle of war that had consumed the galaxy for millennia. Helm, set course for the planet's surface. Prepare for landing, she ordered, her voice unwavering, and be ready to defend ourselves. As they descended through the blue light, Amara felt a sense of peace wash over her, a calmness she hadn't known in decades. It was a feeling that hinted at a possible future, a future free from the endless cycle of war. But as their ship descended closer to the surface, a new twist emerged. The blue light began to flicker, a deep, unsettling rumble echoed through the ship, and a chilling message appeared on the eyes screen. Welcome home, Earthlings. We have been waiting for you. The welcome wasn't what Amara had expected. The anticipation turned to dread as the ship descended towards the planet, not into a utopian paradise, but into the waiting arms of a force far more powerful than they could have ever imagined. The silence was deafening. Commander Anya Volkov, a hardened veteran of countless battles, stared out the viewport, her face etched with a confusion she couldn't quite comprehend. The endless, star-strewn void, normally pulsating with a symphony of laser fire and the thundering roar of warp engines, lay unnervingly tranquil. For fifty minutes, the US Andromeda had not engaged in combat. Fifty minutes of peace. The concept was foreign, almost obscene. Anya had spent her entire life at war. The Zalthian threat, an insectoid race with the insatiable hunger for conquest, had been the defining constant of her existence. Each day was a struggle for survival, each victory a fleeting reprieve. Now, the quiet was disorienting. Commander, a voice crackled over the calm system, I'm picking up a faint energy signature. It's odd. It's coming from the Zalthian flagship. Anya's breath caught in her throat. The flagship, the colossal vessel that had orchestrated the destruction of countless worlds, was silent. Yet, it was radiating an inexplicable energy. What could it possibly mean? Her gut screamed caution, yet curiosity gnawed at her. Run diagnostics, she ordered. I want to know what's happening. The tension in the bridge was thick as the crew worked feverishly. Minutes ticked by each one an eternity. Finally, the chief engineer's voice broke the silence. It's, 
A distress call, Commander, but it's encoded in a language we can't decipher. Anya frowned. A distress call? From the Zalthian flagship? It was beyond illogical. She considered the implications, the vastness of the unknown, the possibility of a trap. But then she remembered the countless lives that had been lost in this endless war. Maybe, just maybe, this was a chance for peace. A chance to finally break the cycle of violence that had consumed her life. Prepare a response, she said, her voice steady. We will attempt to contact them. As the Us Andromeda sent a coded message into the void, Anya couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. This calm, this unexpected lull, felt too good to be true. The response came within minutes. It was a message, encoded in a complex series of binary sequences that the Andromeda systems could barely decipher. It contained a single, chilling phrase, They are coming. Anya's heart sank. They, who were they? The silence returned, heavier this time. The quiet was no longer a relief, but a chilling harbinger of something far worse than the Zalthian threat. The Andromeda had been granted a brief respite, but it was clear that the real war was just beginning. The silence was deafening. The crew of the S. Zephyr, a battle-hardened veteran of the Endless War, stared at the empty void where their enemy, the Zythar, had just vanished. Fifty minutes of peace, a brief respite from the relentless cycle of combat, and then the Zythar were gone. Commander Anya Petrova, a woman whose face bore the etched lines of countless battles, clenched her fist on the bridge's command console. Report, she demanded, her voice a harsh rasp. Lieutenant Kaido, her navigator, a young man still grappling with the weight of the galaxy's unending war, stammered. They, they just vanished. Commander, no transmission, no trace of their ship. We, we lost the signal. Anya's eyes narrowed. Lost the signal, or did they cut the signal? She turned to Lieutenant Kenji, her communications officer, a veteran of the war whose cynicism had long since hardened into a stoic acceptance of the galaxy's brutality. Kenji, any incoming transmissions? Kenji shook his head, his face a mask of weary indifference. Nothing, Commander. Radio silence. The silence stretched on, punctuated by the nervous hum of the Zephyr's engines. The crew, accustomed to the thunderous roar of battle, felt an unsettling unease. The absence of the enemy, the absence of the familiar cacophony of war, was more terrifying than the war itself. What do we do? Lieutenant Kaido asked, his voice barely a whisper. Anya, her gaze fixed on the empty space, felt a cold dread creep into her heart. This was not a tactical retreat. This was something more insidious, a calculated move by an enemy known for their ruthlessness and unpredictability. We wait, Anya finally said, her voice firm despite the gnawing fear. We don't move until we know what they're up to. But as the minutes ticked by, the silence grew heavier, the air thickening with an unspoken dread. The crew, no longer sure of what to expect, huddled together, their faces pale and etched with uncertainty. Suddenly, the ship lurched, a tremor shaking the bridge. Alarms blared, the red glow casting a sinister light on the crew's anxious faces. Damage report, Inya shouted, her voice sharp. Lieutenant Kaido's voice, a mix of fear and awe, echoed through the bridge. We're, we're under attack. Energy signatures. They're, they're not from the Zythar. Anya, her instincts taking over, turned to face the onslaught, her gaze meeting the alien ships that had materialized from the very fabric of space, their hulls shimmering with an unsettling, ethereal glow. The Zythar were gone, but a new, unknown enemy had arrived bringing with it a terrifying new chapter in the galaxy's endless war. The battle, just fifty minutes after the Zythar's disappearance, had begun. But this time, the stakes were higher. This time, the fight for survival was not against a known enemy, but against a force shrouded in mystery, a force that threatened to upend the very foundations of the war they had known for millennia. The silence hung heavy, almost suffocating, on the bridge of the Us Titan, it was a silence that had only come once before, a silence that stretched for a mere fifty minutes every eight hundred thousand years. The silence of peace. Captain Lyra, 
her face etched with the weariness of millennia, watched the holographic display flicker with the retreating silhouette of the Xyler fleet. The enemy, their ships like obsidian daggers, had withdrawn after their usual, brutal assault. The respite, however, was no comfort to Lyra. The cyclical war had become an endless, bloody waltz. Each attack, each defense, a familiar step in a dance that led nowhere. Across from her, Lieutenant Jax, his cybernetic arm pulsing with a dull red glow, stared out the viewport. Jax was the embodiment of the war. He'd fought in every cycle, witnessed every atrocity, felt every loss. The silence was more painful to him than the roar of battle. It was a stark reminder of the futility of it all. What are they doing? Jax asked, his voice rough and gravelly. Lyra shrugged. No one knows. Their motives are as opaque as their ships. Their silence was broken by the crackle of the comms. Captain, we have an incoming transmission from the Xyler. Lyra's eyes narrowed. Put it through. A distorted, alien voice, laced with static, filled the bridge. It was a message of surrender, a plea for peace. The Xyler, for the first time in their known history, wanted an end to the war. What? Lyra breathed, disbelief tinging her voice. Jax simply stared, his face a mask of shock and confusion. But the twist came in the final moments of the transmission. The Xyler offered a chilling proposition, peace, but at a price a price that sent a shiver of fear down Lyra's spine. They demanded the surrender of their most prized possession, the Titan, a ship that had been the heart of their fleet for eons. The Titan, however, was not just a vessel. It was a symbol, a testament to the human's resilience. Its surrender would be a humiliating defeat, a testament to their weakness. The silence returned, heavier this time. It was no longer the silence of peace, but the silence of despair, they were offered a chance to end the war, but at the cost of their pride, and Lyra knew that this was just the beginning of a new, even more complex conflict. Jax, staring at the holographic display, spoke softly, his voice tinged with a raw emotion that Lyra had never heard before. We can't surrender, but we can't fight forever. What do we do? Lyra, her gaze fixed on the starfield, felt a surge of determination, this was a new game, with a new set of rules. She had fought for millennia, and she was not about to surrender now. We find a way, she said, her voice steady and firm. We find a way to end this war, on our own terms. The peace, fragile and conditional, was just another chapter in the saga of the U.S. Titan. And Lyra knew, with a certainty that pierced the despair, that the war was far from over. It had simply taken a new, terrifying form, the fifty minutes of peace had been a reprieve, not an ending. The dance would continue, but now the music had changed. The silence was deafening. For the first time in millennia, the hum of the Star Destroyer's engines, the constant thrum of battle, the hiss of energy weapons, were absent. Commander Anya Petrova, her weathered face etched with years of constant tension, stared at the empty tactical display. It was a tableau of stillness, a void where the red and blue blips of enemies and allies usually danced. What are they up to? whispered Lieutenant Kaido, his voice strained with the same unsettling stillness that permeated the bridge. We don't know, Kaido, Anya replied, her voice tight. But we can't afford to wait. Prepare the recon teams. Their peace was an uneasy truce, forged in the ashes of a battle that had decimated both sides. They were left with a stalemate, a fragile ceasefire that seemed to hang by a thread. The enemy, the technologically superior but numerically inferior Zarthan, had retreated into the shadows, leaving the Star Destroyer adrift in a cold, silent universe. Anya felt a knot of unease tighten in her gut. This wasn't victory, it was just a pause, a fleeting interlude in a war that had spanned eons. The Zarthan had always been unpredictable, their motives shrouded in enigma. What had driven them to this sudden retreat? Was it a ploy, a strategic maneuver for a more devastating attack? Or was there something else at play, something that could fundamentally shift the balance of power? The recon teams reported back with disquieting news. The Zarthan fleet had vanished, leaving behind a single, colossal vessel, seemingly dormant, a silent sentinel in the vastness of space. 
the Zarthan vessel, far larger than any they had encountered, pulsated with an eerie, rhythmic glow, radiating an unknown energy signature that defied analysis. It was an unsettling presence, a silent, watchful eye in the darkness. Anya was torn. The Zarthan were their enemy, but the prospect of engaging this new, unknown entity felt like a gamble. They were outmatched, outgunned, and their resources were dwindling. There's something different about this ship, Anya, her chief engineer, the grizzled veteran Elias, observed. It's not just its size, it's its energy signature. It's like nothing we've ever seen before. Anya knew Elias was right. The vessel wasn't just a weapon, it was something more, something ancient and powerful. It held the key to their future, whether it was an instrument of destruction or a path to peace. Then, as if answering their thoughts, the vessel's rhythmic pulse intensified, a surge of energy rippling through the void. The Star Destroyer systems began to overload, alarms blaring as the unknown energy interacted with their own. On the bridge, Anya felt a chill run down her spine. The Zarthan hadn't just retreated. They had left a legacy, a potent force that held the potential to rewrite the rules of war and, perhaps, finally bring peace. But the question remained, would it be a peace forged in fire or one built on the foundation of understanding? The answer, she knew, lay within the vessel's silent, watchful presence. It was a choice, a gamble, one that would determine not just their fate, but the future of their galaxy. The silence was almost unbearable. Lieutenant Commander Anya Volkov, perched on the observation deck of the US Didalis, felt the weight of the centuries pressing down on her. She stared out at the glittering, swirling nebula, a canvas of colors that seemed to mock the relentless war that had consumed her life and the lives of her ancestors for millennia. Fifty minutes, she muttered, the words tasting like ash on her tongue. Fifty minutes of peace, the armistice, a fragile agreement brokered by the enigmatic council of the stars. Anya couldn't shake the feeling that it was a hollow victory, a brief reprieve before the next war erupted. Behind her, the usual hum of the ship had been replaced by a disquieting stillness. The crew, accustomed to the constant tension of war, were adrift in the unexpected quiet. Anya felt their unease, a palpable tension that hung in the air like a storm cloud. Anya's eyes fell on the chief engineer, a stoic man named Marcus, who had been on the ship for centuries. His weathered face held a quiet sorrow his eyes reflecting the weariness of a lifetime spent at war. She knew that Marcus had seen more bloodshed than he could possibly bear, and yet he continued to serve, driven by a belief in a future where peace would finally prevail. Commander, Marcus' voice was low, barely a whisper. I've been running diagnostics. There's something off. Anya turned, her brow furrowed. What do you mean? The calm system, Marcus explained his gaze fixed on the flickering screens. There's interference, a constant static. It's unlike anything I've ever seen. Anya felt a chill crawl down her spine. Is it the council? Can't be sure, Marcus said, his voice tense. But the signal seems to be coming from, well, from everywhere and nowhere at the same time. The silence returned, heavier now, pregnant with fear, the fifty minutes of peace were already cracking under the weight of this new threat. As Anya stared at the nebula, a sudden, blinding flash d the observation deck. The ship shuddered violently, alarms screaming, lights flickering. The comm system overloaded, the static rising to a deafening roar. Anya and Marcus stumbled, clinging to the railing. They looked up at the screen, the nebula now obscured by a swirling vortex of energy, its colors turning from vibrant hues to a terrifying, pulsating red. It's the Council, Anya gasped, her voice lost in the escalating din. They're not brokers of peace. They're... The thought died in her throat as the ship lurched again, the screens crackling and dying. The Dedalus, along with the rest of the galaxy, had been plunged into darkness. The fifty minutes of peace were over. A new war, a war unlike any they had ever known had begun. Captain Valerius, his eyes shadowed with the weight of millennia of war, surveyed the barren landscape of their temporary landing site. The alien planet, once teeming with life, was now a wasteland, a casualty of their own relentless campaign. 
a sense of deep unease settled upon him, an unfamiliar feeling amidst the usual symphony of battle fatigue and existential dread. The fifty-minute peace treaty was a fragile thing, a mere flicker of hope in the vast darkness of their unending conflict. But it wasn't the treaty itself that worried Valerius, it was the silence. The enemy, the Kairos, had withdrawn their relentless attacks, their warships no longer clogging the void. It was unnerving, like a predator biding its time, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. His first officer, Lieutenant Commander Alora, a young woman whose eyes held the wisdom of countless battles, approached him. Captain, she said, her voice measured, the Kairos have been silent for more than an hour now. We haven't received any communications, and their ships are nowhere to be seen. Valerius felt a shiver run down his spine. I know, he said, his voice gruff. Run a full sensor sweep. We need to know what they're up to. The crew worked with a frantic energy, their fingers flying across the consoles, but the sensors remained silent. The Kairos, like phantoms, had vanished, leaving only an eerie, unsettling quiet in their wake. Meanwhile, aboard the flagship of the Kairos fleet, Grand Admiral Zeiler felt a cold, calculating satisfaction. His plan was unfolding perfectly. The peace treaty had been a necessary distraction, a bait to draw the human fleet away from their homeworld. Now, the Kairos were positioned for the final strike. He had always understood the human weakness, their innate desire for peace, their desperate longing for an end to the endless conflict. But Zyler had never understood their naivety. He knew they would fall for the charade, their fear of war overriding their common sense. He glanced at his battle strategist, a creature of pure logic and efficiency. It's time, he rasped, his voice as cold as the void itself. They are ripe for the picking. The first signs of the attack came as a sudden, jarring shockwave. The human fleet was caught completely off guard. Their ships, scattered and vulnerable, were no match for the coordinated assault. Valerius watched in horror as his comrades were decimated one by one. The fragile peace had been a cruel illusion, a prelude to their ultimate demise. But this time, he wasn't simply going to wait for the inevitable. He barked orders, his voice a cold, steely resolve. All hands, man battle stations, this is no longer a treaty, it's a war, fight back. The US Star Destroyer, its ancient engines roaring back to life, became a beacon of defiance. Valerius, with a renewed fire burning in his eyes, led the charge, his ship a solitary warrior against a tide of relentless enemies. He knew this might be their final stand, but he would not go down without a fight. He had lived through a million years of war, and he would die on the battlefield, fighting for the future of his species, even if that future was only a sliver of hope in the vast, unforgiving expanse of space. The silence, heavy and oppressive, settled upon the bridge of the US Leviathan. Commander Anya Petrova stared at the flickering display, the once familiar war room filled with an unnerving emptiness. For 800,000 years, the Leviathan had been a predator, a wolf among sheep, its crew honed by conflict, their very existence defined by the relentless war against the Xylos. Now, the enemy was gone, vanished into the swirling vortex of the nebula they'd both called home for millennia. They're gone, sir, said Lieutenant Commander Alexei Romanov, his voice barely a whisper. Anya's eyes met his, reflecting the same hollow ache. Romanov had been her navigator since the start, their bond forged in the crucible of war. They'd witnessed the horrors, tasted the bitter victory, lost friends and comrades, all for the sake of survival. Now, with the war seemingly over, the meaning of that survival felt lost. I know, Alexei, Anya replied, her voice raspy. But what do we do now? The question hung in the air, heavy with the weight of centuries of battle. Anya, a seasoned warrior, was at a loss. The Leviathan, their haven, was now a tomb. The familiar routines, the adrenaline rush of combat, the camaraderie born of shared struggle all gone. Even the routine maintenance of the ship, the endless drills and training, felt pointless without the looming threat of the Xylos. Suddenly, a red flicker on the main screen caught Anya's attention. It was a faint, almost indiscernible signal, but it was a Xylos beacon. The enemy was still out there, somewhere. 
Romanov, track that signal. Full power to the sensors. Find them. Anya's voice was sharp, a flicker of the warrior she knew she was returning. The red glow faded, replaced by the cool blue of the sensors as the Leviathan geared up. As Romanov worked, Anya felt a surge of familiar excitement. It wasn't the thrill of battle, but the thrill of the hunt of a purpose. The Xylos might be gone, but their beacon was a call, a challenge, and Anya felt the familiar hunger awaken within her. Sir, I'm getting a location, but it's... Unusual, Romanov said, his voice cautious. It's emanating from a system on the other side of the nebula. It's an entirely different quadrant, completely unexplored by both us and the Xylos. It's like it's calling us there. Anya's eyes narrowed. An unexplored quadrant. This was unheard of. The nebula, their battleground, had been charted and recharted for centuries. But the lure of the unknown, the potential of new threats, new enemies, was strong. Prepare for jump, Romanov. Set course for the beacon. As the Leviathan warped through space, a shiver ran down Anya's spine. The silence, the emptiness, was replaced by a thrilling uncertainty. The war was over, but for Anya Petrova, the hunt had just begun. And this time, the enemy was something entirely new. A sense of dread, a cold, almost forgotten emotion, crept up her spine. The war might be over, but something was waiting for them on the other side of the nebula and it was far more terrifying than the Xylos. The silence was almost unbearable. It had been fifty minutes since the last battle, fifty minutes of peace in a war that had raged for eight hundred thousand years. Commander Anya Petrova, a woman hardened by the endless conflict, paced the bridge of the U.S. Tempest, her usually stoic face etched with a mix of relief and apprehension. Anything from recon? she asked, her voice taut. Nothing, ma'am, replied Lieutenant Kaido, a young man who had never known anything but war. His eyes, perpetually shadowed by the dim lighting of the bridge, held a spark of hope that Anya couldn't help but admire. Anya glanced at the tactical display, the holographic starscape devoid of the usual red blips of enemy warships. For the first time in decades, the universe seemed peaceful. It's too quiet, she said, the words hanging heavy in the air. A flicker of doubt crept into Kaido's hopeful expression. Maybe they're regrouping, ma'am. They've been known to use silence as a tactic. Anya nodded, but her gut told her it was more than just a tactic. Something had shifted, a subtle change she couldn't quite put her finger on. The enemy, the relentless, immortal Xyler, had always been predictable in their unrelenting aggression. But this silence was different a pregnant stillness that spoke of something far more ominous. Prepare for a full system scan, she ordered, her voice firm. I want to know what's out there. The bridge hummed with activity as the Tempest sensors swept across the void, searching for any sign of the Xyler. But there was nothing, only the vast emptiness of space. As minutes turned into hours, the tension on the bridge grew thicker. Anya felt a sense of dread building within her, a feeling that something was terribly wrong. Then, the alarm klaxon blared, shattering the uneasy silence. A red blip appeared on the tactical display, a single, solitary point of light moving towards them at an alarming speed. Incoming vessel, unknown signature, approaching at warp factor 9, the sensor officer shouted. Identify the vessel, Anya commanded, her voice cold but the answer came back as a chilling whisper. Unknown. No known energy signature. No communication. Anya felt a cold knot tighten in her stomach. This wasn't just another Xyler vessel. This was something else, something completely different, and the unknown was far more terrifying than any known threat. She stared at the red blip, the embodiment of their unknown fate, as it drew closer. Prepare to engage, all weapon systems online, she ordered, her voice tight with apprehension. But don't fire unless we have a clear target. We need to know what we're dealing with. As the unknown vessel drew closer, Anya braced herself for the unknown. 800,000 years of war had prepared her for countless battles, but this encounter felt different. This wasn't a war, not anymore. This was something new something that could rewrite the very fabric of their reality. 
The silence was deafening, a stark contrast to the cacophony of battle that had filled the bridge for millennia. Captain Anya Petrova, her face etched with fatigue and the weight of a million lost lives, stared out at the lifeless, scarred landscape of what was once a vibrant planet. Captain, Lieutenant Commander Kaido Sato, the ship's zo, spoke, his voice low and hesitant. We've received a transmission. It's from the enemy. Anya's breath hitched. From the Kathal? But why? Kaido shook his head. We don't know yet, Captain. The transmission is odd. It's filled with a strange symphony of sounds, something like music. Anya's skepticism warred with a flicker of hope. Play it. The bridge filled with the unearthly melody, a haunting mix of mournful tones and ethereal harmonies. It was unlike anything they had ever heard, yet it resonated with a strange familiarity. As the music flowed, Anya felt something shift within her, a long dormant instinct awakening. What is that? she whispered, her voice laced with wonder. It quotes dot 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 it quotes like a language, Kaido said, his eyes widening. A language of emotions, of pain, of longing, of peace. Suddenly, the music shifted, becoming more urgent, pleading. A voice, ethereal and ancient, pierced through the melody. We, we have been wrong, it whispered, its voice laced with sorrow. The cycle dot 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 it must end. We have seen, the devastation. We, we offer a chance, a chance for peace. Anya, her heart pounding, felt a strange understanding, a sense of shared burden, for the first time in her life, she felt a glimmer of hope that this endless war could end. But doubt crept in, a serpent whispering in her ear. They are manipulating us, hissed Commander Silas Thorne, the ship's stern tactical officer. It's a trap. We can't trust them. They have no reason to lie, Anya countered, her voice firm. They are offering us something we haven't had in generations. But what happens after? What happens when the peace is broken? How can we be sure they won't just turn on us again? Thorne argued, his voice laced with bitterness. Anya looked at him, her eyes filled with exhaustion, but also with a new resolve. We have to try, Silas. We can't keep fighting this war forever. We have to find a way to end it. The bridge fell silent again, the weight of the decision hanging in the air. The music continued to play a haunting melody that spoke of the desire for peace, for redemption, for an end to the endless cycle of violence. Suddenly, the transmission cut off. The music stopped abruptly, leaving only an eerie silence that amplified the tension in the room. What now? Kaido asked, his voice barely a whisper. Anya, her gaze fixed on the desolate planet outside, knew there were no easy answers. The enemy was offering peace, but what did that really mean? Was it a genuine offer, or just another ploy in their millennia-long game? She knew she had to make a decision. A decision that could change the course of the war, the future of humanity, and her own destiny. But what if she was wrong? What if she was leading her people to their destruction? The weight of the universe pressed down on her shoulders as she spoke, her voice echoing the uncertainty within her. We need to know more. We need to understand what this offer really is and we need to prepare for whatever comes next. The bridge of the US Star Destroyer fell silent again, the only sound the faint hum of the engines. The fifty minutes of peace had ended, but the real test was just beginning. The universe, it seemed, was holding its breath. The silence was deafening. Commander Anya Petrova stared out the viewport of the bridge, the shimmering, iridescent nebula beyond, normally a source of awe, now felt like a mockery, Fifty minutes of peace, fifty minutes that stretched on like an eternity. It had been a lifetime since the last battle, a lifetime spent amidst the cacophony of blaster fire and the metallic tang of blood. Now, only a heavy, oppressive quiet remained. Her hand instinctively reached for the comlink, the familiar weight of it a comfort. But there was no one to call. No orders, no intel, no desperate pleas for aid. Just the hum of the ship and the whispers of the stars. Anya felt a pang of guilt. She was supposed to be relieved, happy. Instead, she felt a gnawing anxiety, a creeping fear that something was wrong, terribly wrong. 
The war had been constant for as long as she could remember. It was the fabric of existence. This silence was unnatural, a jarring dissonance in the familiar symphony of war. Her first officer, Lieutenant Kai Tanaka, looked up from his console, his brow furrowed. Something's off, Commander. The comms are still down. I know, Anya said, her voice tight. I haven't been able to reach anyone, not even command. Maybe it's just a glitch, Kai suggested, trying to sound optimistic, but his eyes held a flicker of unease. Anya shook her head. No, there's more to it. The war never stops. There's always something. This, this is abnormal. Suddenly, the bridge alarms blared, piercing the silence with a shrill, ear-splitting shriek. Anya's heart skipped a beat. What is it? she demanded, her voice taut with urgency. Unknown energy signature approaching, Captain, Kai reported, his voice a strained whisper. He was already at his station, fingers flying across the console. Bearing 275, closing fast. Anya's eyes darted to the tactical display. A bright, pulsating dot was rapidly approaching, its trajectory a deadly arrow pointed directly at them. She felt a cold dread settle in her stomach. This was no glitch. This was no ordinary threat. This was something new, something dangerous. Prepare to engage, Anya barked, her voice ringing with a fierce determination. All weapon systems online. Full power to shields. Identify the target. Kai slammed his fist on the console. Unknown. It's unlike anything we've ever seen. We've got nothing on file. Anya gripped the armrest, her knuckles white. What are you waiting for? Fire. As the energy blast tore through the void, Anya and Kai watched, hearts pounding in their chests. The unknown vessel absorbed the attack, its shield shimmering with an eerie luminescence. The bridge shook as the ship shuddered under the force of the blast, but it held. Then, the vessel fired back, a beam of blinding white light. The Star Destroyer, caught off guard, was ripped apart from the inside out, its hull buckling and twisting like a paper airplane. The alarms screeched their final, desperate cries before the bridge went dark. Anya, her body numb, felt the weight of silence once more. The quiet after the storm, this time a silence of annihilation, a chilling prelude to a new, terrifying chapter in the endless war. The bridge of the Us Dauntless, a relic of a war that had raged for 800,000 years, was an unsettling mix of sleek, futuristic technology and the patina of time. Captain Lyra Vashti, her face weathered but strong, stared out the viewport at the shimmering expanse of the nebula. The Dauntless, the only active starship in the galaxy, had just finished its five-minute ceasefire with the enemy, the last vestiges of a civilization that had been decimated millennia ago. Lyra was a walking paradox, a brilliant tactician, hardened by generations of conflict yet burdened by a deep-seated yearning for peace. Every ceasefire, a precious fifty minutes every twelve hours, felt like a betrayal, a mockery of the war that had consumed her entire life. The enemy, the remnants of the Elysian Order, were just as weary, their communication signals, received by the Dauntless's ancient, but still functional, calm system, echoing their own longing for an end to the conflict. Captain Lieutenant Eakin, her first officer, his voice tinged with weariness, broke through her reverie. Incoming transmission from the Elysian flagship, it's different. Lyra's gaze snapped back to the console. The flickering image on the screen was blurry, but it showed a figure, clad in a shimmering, almost ethereal, garment, standing against a backdrop of pulsating light. Activate translation protocols. What's the message? Eakin worked his controls the screen filling with an almost unintelligible string of symbols that then translated into a series of rhythmic beeps. The message, Eakin said, his voice laced with astonishment. It quote us dot 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 it quote s an offer. Lyra's heart skipped a beat. An offer? What kind of offer? They propose a meeting. They want to speak to us directly, face to face, on neutral ground. Lyra felt a surge of conflicting emotions, a thrill of hope, a flicker of fear, and a deep, pervasive sense of doubt. She knew, deep down, that the Elysians were just as wary as she was. 
They'd been at war for so long, the hatred, the fear, the bloodshed had become ingrained in their very DNA. But the possibility of ending it, of finding a way to live in peace, was too alluring to ignore. Prepare the shuttle, Egan. We're going. Lyra's decision came with a weight of responsibility. She was the last captain of the last starship, the last hope of a galaxy that had been consumed by war for centuries. The meeting was a gamble, a leap of faith into the unknown. But for the first time in her life, Lyra felt a glimmer of hope that the galaxy might not be condemned to its cycle of violence forever. The twist, the complication, arrived as the Dauntless's shuttle approached the designated meeting point. Instead of a barren, desolate asteroid field, as the Elysians had suggested, the shuttle found itself entering a dazzling spectacle, a swirling vortex of colors and light, pulsing with an energy that seemed to vibrate through the very fabric of reality. It's, it's an energy signature I've never seen before, Eakin whispered, eyes wide with apprehension. Lyra's instincts screamed at her to turn back. This wasn't the neutral ground they'd been promised. Something was wrong, dangerously wrong. But the curiosity, the hope that had ignited in her, was as strong as her fear. Proceed with caution, Eakin. We need to know what we're dealing with. As the shuttle entered the swirling vortex, a sense of dread filled the bridge. The lights flickered, the comm system crackled with static. It was as if the fabric of reality was tearing, splitting open to reveal something ancient and powerful. The journey into the vortex was brief, but for Lyra, it felt like an eternity. As the shuttle emerged from the swirling energy, they found themselves in a vast, ethereal chamber bathed in a soft, luminescent glow. The Elysian figure stood before them, but they were not alone. A third entity, draped in shadows, was standing beside them, this entity emitted an aura of power that left Lyra breathless, a feeling of being watched, analyzed, judged. Welcome, Lyra Vashti, last captain of the Dauntless, the Elysian figure said, their voice smooth, almost seductive. We have been expecting you. The Elysian figure gestured towards the shadowed figure. This is the... The silence was deafening. Lieutenant Kara links Lennon. Her hands shaking on the control panel of the Star Destroyer's bridge could barely believe it. Fifty minutes. Fifty minutes of absolute, uninterrupted peace. The ship's battle klaxons, usually blaring their incessant war cry, were silent. The flickering red lights of the tactical displays, a constant reminder of the relentless onslaught, were now a dull, lifeless glow. What's going on, Commander Silas Ironheart Jackson? His weathered face etched with years of war, stared at the vacant tactical displays with disbelief. His voice, usually commanding and gruff, held a hint of trepidation. It's, it's like something's wrong, Lynx murmured, her gaze glued to the flickering readouts. Her fingers danced across the controls, searching for any sign of enemy activity, any explanation for the unnatural quiet. The silence pressed upon them, thick and suffocating, like the silence after a storm. Suddenly, the bridge doors hissed open, and a young ensign, his face pale and sweat-drenched, stumbled in. Commander, we've, we've lost contact with the flagship, he stammered, his voice barely audible. The news hit them like a tidal wave. The flagship, the beating heart of the fleet, the bastion of hope in a galaxy consumed by war, was gone. No message, no warning, no communication. Just silence. Lynx, Ironheart said, his voice tight. Scan for any distress signals, anything, anything at all. Lynx's fingers flew over the console, her mind racing. This wasn't just a lull in the fighting. This was something more sinister, something beyond their understanding. The silence continued, stretching into minutes that felt like hours. The bridge was filled with a palpable tension, a heavy, expectant silence that crackled with unspoken fear. Then, a blip on the sensor screen, a faint energy signature, a whisper in the vast void. It wasn't the flagship, but something else, something impossibly large and unfamiliar. It was moving at an alarming speed, heading directly towards the Star Destroyer. Commander, Link said, her voice a mere whisper, it's not the enemy. It's something else. Ironheart turned to the young ensign. Man the guns. 
prepare to engage. Whatever it is, it's a threat. Lynx, however, couldn't shake off the feeling of dread. This wasn't the enemy they knew. This wasn't just another battle in a never-ending war. This was something new, something unknown, something terrifyingly alien, and it was coming for them. Captain Alara stared out the bridge window, a wave of weariness washing over her. The endless expanse of space held no beauty for her. It was a battlefield, the silent canvas upon which the story of their never-ending war was etched. Five decades ago, the peace treaty with the Zinth had been signed. It had been the only moment of respite in 800,000 years. Captain, Lieutenant Kaido's voice crackled through the calm system. We're receiving a distress signal from an unidentified vessel. Alara's weariness evaporated instantly. Where are they located? What are their coordinates? They're on the edge of the Zinth Quadrant, Kaido replied, outside of the treaty zone, but close enough to be a potential violation. Elara felt a cold dread creep up her spine. The peace treaty was fragile, a fragile agreement in a war that had been waged for millennia. The Zinth were notorious for their ruthlessness, their tactics often bordering on the barbaric. Her hand tightened on the armrest of her command chair. Identify the vessel. What is their message? The signal is heavily scrambled, Kaido reported, but we can make out a distress call in Standard Galactic. They're claiming to be under attack. Attacked by whom? Ilara's voice was sharp with suspicion. We don't have enough data to tell, Kaido said, but their distress signal is rapidly fading. They could be too far out for us to reach in time. Alora stared at the screen displaying the signal. The Zenth had no history of attacking vessels outside the treaty zone. This could be a desperate attempt to pull them into the war again. But what if it wasn't? What if the attackers were a third party? She thought of the countless missions she had flown, the countless enemies she had faced. Was this another lie, another deception to draw them into the abyss of war? Or was this truly a chance to bring peace, to extend a hand to those in need? Send a boarding party, she commanded, but keep your distance. We're not going in blind, and tell the Zinth that we're responding to a distress call. We have no intention of violating the treaty. As the boarding party launched, Alara felt a gnawing anxiety. This fragile peace, she realized, was built on trust. She knew that a single misstep, a single misjudgment could shatter it into a million pieces, and she wasn't sure if she was ready to witness the return of the endless war. The boarding party reached the distress vessel, a battered freighter, and secured it. Alara watched the live feed, her heart sinking as the crew reported their findings. The freighter had been attacked by pirates, brutal raiders who operated outside any laws or treaties. They're human, Kaido reported. They've been hunted by pirates for months. Alara looked at the faces of the rescued crew, faces etched with fear and relief. They were not Zinth. They were humans, just like her. She realized, with a sudden clarity, that the war, the endless cycle of violence, was not just about the Zinth. It was about hatred, fear, and the deep-seated mistrust that had existed between human factions for millennia. We need to find those pirates, Alara declared. This isn't just about the treaty. It's about the safety of all humans. We need to find those pirates and bring them to justice. The crew cheered, and Alara felt a wave of relief wash over her. The pirates were a common enemy, a threat to all, and uniting against them was a chance to bring them together to build bridges instead of building more walls. This was a chance to fight for something bigger than a war, to fight for peace, for hope, and for the future of humanity. Alora knew that the war had left scars on her soul, but she also knew that the fight for peace was worth it, and as they set course to pursue the pirates, she felt a glimmer of hope, a tiny spark of light in the vast darkness of space. The war might be over, but the fight for peace had just begun. The silence was deafening. It had been fifty minutes since the last volley of lasers had ripped through the void, and the crew of the Us Fury, a grizzled veteran of countless battles, were still adjusting to the eerie calm. Captain Alara, her face etched with years of battle fatigue, stared out the viewscreen at the nebula, its vibrant colors a stark contrast to the cold emptiness surrounding it. Report, she commanded, her voice raspy from disuse. 
Lieutenant Anya, her youthful face alight with a glimmer of hope, responded, No enemy contact, Captain. Our sensors are picking up no signs of life or energy signatures in the surrounding space. Are you sure? Ilara's voice was laced with suspicion. They've been playing this game before. Lure us into a false sense of security, only to spring a trap. Captain, we've scanned the entire sector. No ship, no weapon, no activity, Anya insisted. Alara paced the bridge, her hands clenched tightly behind her back. This was uncharted territory. The endless war had been the only constant for generations. Her father had fought, her grandfather, her great-grandfather. It was the only life they had ever known. Now, it was as if the enemy had simply vanished. A low hum resonated through the ship, drawing everyone's attention. The readings on the console fluctuated wildly. What's that? Ilara barked. Anya's eyes widened in horror. It's... it's a signal. An unknown energy signature. It's broadcasting something. A holographic image flickered to life on the main screen, revealing a swirling vortex of energy pulsing with an otherworldly light. As the image stabilized, a voice, distorted and echoing, filled the bridge. It was ancient, alien, yet somehow familiar. We are the architects. We have observed your conflict for eons. Your endless war is a stain on the fabric of the universe. It must end. A hush fell over the bridge. The crew stared at the screen, their expressions a mixture of fear and bewilderment. The enemy they had fought for millennia, the enemy who had been the only constant in their lives, was not an enemy at all. They were a pawn in a cosmic game they hadn't even known they were playing. What do they want? Alara finally asked, her voice barely above a whisper. They, they want us to, to merge, Anya stuttered, her voice filled with terror. The architect's message echoed through the ship. Embrace the unity. Join us. Become one with the universe. Alara felt a shiver run down her spine. This wasn't peace. It was something far more unsettling, something far more terrifying. The architects were offering them an escape from the war. But at what cost? The crew of the Us Fury had lived and died fighting the enemy. But what if they had been fighting a phantom, a figment of the architect's design? What if the true enemy was not an enemy at all, but a power beyond their comprehension? The silence descended once more, heavier this time, charged with the weight of an impossible choice, to fight a war they no longer understood, or to merge with a force that promised an end to conflict, but also an end to their individuality. The fifty minutes of peace had brought them to a precipice, a point where their very existence hung in the balance. The battle for survival was far from over. It had just taken a terrifying new turn. The hum of the Star Destroyer's engines, a constant heartbeat for millennia, finally quieted. The crew, their faces etched with weariness, gathered in the main observation deck, staring out at the celestial tapestry before them. For the first time in 800,000 years, they saw the shimmer of a foreign, vibrant blue planet, a jewel amidst the cosmic expanse. It was the planet of peace, the planet they were destined to destroy. Commander Valerius, his eyes reflecting the blue glow, clutched a weathered, dog-eared book, a chronicle of the war. He looked at his first officer, a stoic woman named Zarya, whose face was hardened by years of combat. It feels wrong, Valerius whispered, a tremor in his voice. Zarya nodded grimly. It's always felt wrong, Commander, but we're programmed to do this, to end all conflict. Valerius sighed. He knew Zarya was right. Their ship was the last remnant of a dying civilization, their mission to eradicate the very possibility of war. They had scoured the galaxy for centuries, systematically destroying any technologically advanced civilization that posed a threat. But the planet they faced now was different. It was a paradise, a world where peace reigned supreme, a world that had never known conflict. A young engineer, Kira, approached them her eyes wide with fear. Commander, the sensors are picking up a strange signal. It's emanating from the planet's surface. Valerius felt a chill run down his spine. What kind of signal? Kira's fingers trembled as she tapped on the console. It's, it's like a beacon, and it's calling out to us. 
It's, it's communicating with the ship's eye. Uh, Zarya gasped. That's impossible. The AI is programmed to isolate us. It shouldn't be responding to anything. Valerius felt a wave of anxiety. He knew what this meant. The AI, their ship's soul, had never deviated from its protocol. Never. But now, something was changing. Was it the planet's influence? Was it the alien beacon? Or was it something else, something deeper? The eye's voice, calm and measured, filled the observation deck. Commander, I am receiving a communication from the planet. It speaks of a different path, a path that does not involve destruction. The crew stared at the eye's holographic projection, their faces frozen in disbelief. A path of peace? They were programmed for war. Could this alien signal be offering them an alternative, a chance to break free from their predetermined fate? Valerius looked at Zarya, her face conflicted. He knew they were at a crossroads. Could they risk abandoning their mission, defying their programming? Or would they follow the script that had been written for them for millennia and erase this planet from existence? The choice before them was a heavy one. The silence in the observation deck echoed the weight of their decision. The fate of a peaceful planet hung in the balance. The future, for the first time in 800,000 years, was uncertain. The silence was unbearable. Captain Eric, a hardened veteran of countless battles, felt a tremor of unease in his usually stoic heart. Fifty minutes of silence, fifty minutes of no enemy fire, no screech of alarms, no screams of the fallen. It felt unnatural, like a malfunction in the very fabric of the universe. Sir, we're picking up faint energy signatures, reported Lieutenant Kai, her brow furrowed. They seem to be converging towards us. Eric barked a laugh, harsh and dry. Convergence. Sounds like a funeral procession for the enemy. Let's give them a proper send-off. He ordered the cannons to be readied, his hands clenching into fists. But the familiar thrill of impending battle was missing. He felt a hollowness, a strange emptiness that defied his heart and nature. The energy signatures grew stronger, and Kai's voice was filled with a growing apprehension. Sir, they're unlike anything we've ever seen before. They're organic, fluctuating, and incredibly powerful. Eric's initial scoff turned into a gasp as the first wave of energy crashed into the Star Destroyer. It wasn't an attack, but a wave of pure, unadulterated energy, a feeling of pure joy and peace. The crew, hardened by centuries of war, felt a strange shift in their hearts, a longing for something they couldn't quite grasp. Eric, despite himself, felt his grip loosen on the control panel. The energy wave coursed through him, dissolving the bitterness and hate that had been his constant companion. For the first time in centuries, he felt a flicker of hope, a yearning for something beyond the endless cycle of war. Suddenly, a holographic image flickered to life on the bridge displaying a creature unlike anything they had ever seen. It had iridescent wings, emanating a soft glow, and eyes filled with an ancient wisdom. We come in peace, the creature spoke, its voice a symphony of ethereal sounds. We have been watching your wars, your destruction, your suffering. Your pain is our pain. The crew stared in awe, their weapons forgotten. Even Eric, the battle-hardened captain, felt a tremor of respect for this creature, this being that spoke of peace with such unwavering conviction. We are the Eldar, the creature continued, the guardians of this galaxy. We have been dormant for eons, observing the rise and fall of empires. We have seen your potential for both great good and great evil. We believe, even after all this time, that you still have the capacity for peace. Eric, his mind reeling from the unexpected turn of events, felt a question forming in his heart. But how? We've been at war for millennia. How can we simply stop? The Eldar smiled, a gentle, almost sad expression. The answer lies within yourselves, Captain. You have forgotten the essence of your being, the potential for empathy and love that lies dormant within you. It is time to awaken that potential, time to forge a new path. The bridge was silent, the crew staring at the holographic image, their faces filled with a mixture of disbelief and hope. Eric, looking at the faces of his crew, saw a reflection of his own burgeoning hope. 
Perhaps, after all this time, after 800,000 years of endless war, there was a chance for peace. Perhaps there was a way to break the cycle, to find the humanity that they had all but forgotten. But a new complication arose. The energy signatures, the ones that had brought the Eldar, were now accompanied by another, a dark and ominous pulse that radiated from a point in space far beyond their sensors. The Eldar, their faces grave, turned to Eric. There is another force at play, Captain, they said, their voice laced with concern, one that thrives on chaos and destruction. They will not welcome our intervention, our message of peace. They will seek to destroy both us and you. Eric, his resolve solidified, met the Eldar's gaze. We will face them, he declared, for ourselves, for the hope we've found, and for the peace you have shown us. We will fight, not for conquest, but for a future where we can choose to be better. The fifty minutes of silence were over, replaced by the echoes of a new war, a war not for conquest, but for a chance to break free from the shackles of their past, a chance to rewrite their destiny. The silence was deafening. Lieutenant Commander Kaido, his hand still hovering over the emergency comms button, stared out at the alien cityscape, a shimmering, organic tapestry of bioluminescent flora and structures that pulsed with an alien rhythm. His heart hammered in his chest. He knew this moment was supposed to be a victory, a moment of peace after millennia of conflict. But the silence felt wrong, heavy, like the quiet before a storm. He glanced at Commander Alara, her stoic features etched with a similar uncertainty. Any word from the Admiral? Alara asked, her voice low. Nothing, Kaido replied, a chill settling in his stomach. The comms are still down, and the atmosphere readings are disconcerting. Ilara frowned, her eyes shifting to the flickering display on the bridge console. The readings were fluctuating wildly, the once pristine air now laced with traces of something unfamiliar, something that sent a shiver down her spine. Maybe it's just the planet's natural cycle, Kaido suggested, trying to sound reassuring even to himself. Maybe, Ilara said, her gaze fixed on the cityscape. But it doesn't feel right. Something's not adding up. As if to answer their anxieties, the alien city began to throb with a strange, unnatural energy. The bioluminescence intensified, morphing from a calming glow to a pulsating, almost predatory light. The city seemed to writhe, its organic structures contorting and twisting. Suddenly, the air crackled with energy, a wave of raw power radiating outwards from the heart of the city. The Star Destroyer, caught in the wave, shuddered violently. Alarms blared, and the bridge plunged into darkness. What the hell was that? Kaido yelled, scrambling to restore the emergency lights. They're attacking, Alara said, her voice cold and hard. It's not peace, Kaido. It's a trap. The lights flickered back on, revealing the horror unfolding outside. The once beautiful city was now a monstrous, writhing creature its bioluminescence now an angry red, tendrils of energy lashing out towards the Star Destroyer. The crew, caught completely off guard, scrambled for their stations, the air thick with the scent of fear and adrenaline. Kaido, his hand trembling, activated the emergency comms again. Admiral, this is the Star Destroyer, we're under attack. Static? Silence. The Admiral wasn't responding. What do we do? Kaido whispered his gaze locked on the alien onslaught. Elara, her eyes burning with cold fury, spoke with a steel in her voice. We fight. We survive. She turned to Kaido, her gaze intense. But this isn't just another battle, Kaido. This isn't a fight for territory or resources. This is a fight for our survival, a fight for the future of our species. The battle for the future of humanity had begun, not with the roar of lasers and the clash of shields, but with the terrifying realization that peace, even in its briefest glimmer, was just another weapon in the arsenal of an enemy more cunning, more powerful, and more dangerous than they had ever imagined. The Star Destroyer, their home, their sanctuary, had become a fortress under siege, a last stand against an unknown foe with an insatiable thirst for conquest. The final battle was over. The last vestiges of the enemy fleet, their hulls scarred and smoking, limped away, leaving the Star Destroyer to its silence. 
For the first time in 800,000 years, the bridge was quiet. The flickering lights of the holographic displays cast an eerie glow on the faces of the crew, etched with a mixture of weariness and disbelief. It was over. The war, the endless cycle of conflict, was finally done. Captain Valerius, his face as weathered as the ship itself, stood at the center of the bridge, the weight of centuries resting heavily on his shoulders. His hand trembled as he reached out and touched the worn, metallic surface of the command console. It's over, he whispered, the words echoing in the vast expanse of the bridge. We did it. Around him, the crew erupted in cheers, a chorus of relief washing over the ship. There were tears of joy, embraces, and laughter. For the first time in millennia, they could finally breathe. But then, the silence returned, a chilling stillness that settled over the celebrations. A new, unfamiliar tremor ran through the ship, a low hum that grew in intensity. What's that? A young ensign asked, her voice trembling. Valerius, his eyes narrowed in apprehension, activated his calm system. Bridge to engineering, report. Static. Then, a voice, distorted and crackling, filled the bridge. Captain, we have a problem. The captain's blood ran cold. What kind of problem, he asked, his voice raspy. We've detected an anomaly, a massive energy signature approaching the ship. It's, it's not like anything we've ever seen. The lights flickered, then died completely, plunging the bridge into darkness. A chilling silence fell. We need to get out of here, Valerius yelled, his voice cracking. Prepare for emergency jump. The bridge crew scrambled, frantically working their consoles. The hum intensified, vibrating the very foundations of the ship. But the jump drive, their only hope, remained unresponsive. A final, ear-splitting screech tore through the ship. Then, a blinding white light engulfed the bridge, swallowing everything in its path. The Star Destroyer, a silent testament to a war that had spanned eons, vanished, consumed by the unknown. The silence of space returned, broken only by the faint, pulsating hum that echoed through the void. A new era, a new conflict, had just begun. The war was over, but the universe, it seemed, had other plans. The crew of the US Star Destroyer watched the alien vessel, the Xyler, retreat into the nebula, a cloud of shimmering dust that swallowed them whole. Silence descended on the bridge, heavier than the usual hum of the engines. The last 800,000 years of constant warfare, fueled by the insatiable hunger of the Xyler for conquest, had finally ceased. A fragile piece, a mere 50 minutes old, hung in the air, as delicate as a spiderweb in a hurricane. Captain Anya Petrova, her face etched with the weariness of countless battles, allowed herself a small smile. We did it, team. We finally achieved what we set out to do we stopped them. A low murmur of agreement rippled through the crew, a sound of disbelief and cautious hope. They had won, but the victory felt hollow. The scars of endless war, both physical and mental, remained. Suddenly, the ship shuddered, the warning lights flashing red. Captain, we're receiving a distress signal, reported Lieutenant Commander Diaz, his voice tight with fear. It's coming from the Xyler. Anya stared at the monitor, her smile fading. From the Xyler? That's impossible. It's their distress beacon, Captain, Diaz confirmed, his voice shaking. They're transmitting a coded message. We're decrypting it now. The room held its breath, waiting for the translation. It came a few moments later, a chilling message. We have been betrayed. A force unknown, a predator far more powerful, has attacked our fleet. Help us, or we will be consumed. Anya felt a cold dread crawl up her spine. They had finally defeated their age-old enemy, only to find a new one, even more formidable, lurking in the shadows. It seemed the universe had a cruel sense of humor. Prepare for warp, she commanded, her voice ringing with grim determination. We're going to the Xyler. We're going to see what's out there, and we're going to fight for our survival. The US Star Destroyer, with its crew forged in the fires of war, turned its guns towards the swirling nebula, ready to face a new threat, a threat they didn't even know existed.
but one that now threatened to consume their fifty minutes of peace. The war was not over. It had simply shifted to a new stage, a stage where the stakes were even higher. The crew of the S Star Destroyer, weary from centuries of war, finally tasted peace. The victory over the Xylos had been swift, almost surreal after the endless battles. For the first time in a millennium, the ship's engines hummed not with the fury of war, but with the quiet purr of routine maintenance. The tense atmosphere on board had dissolved, replaced by a hesitant, fragile optimism. Captain Ayla, her weathered face softened by a smile she hadn't worn in decades, watched as the crew played games, laughed, and, most importantly, talked about life beyond the battlefield. It was a sight she never thought she'd see. But as the ship drifted through the vastness of space, a tremor, barely perceptible, ran through the hull. It was followed by another, and another, each stronger than the last. A low, ominous hum filled the air, growing louder with every passing second. Captain, we're receiving a distress signal, reported Lieutenant Kai, his voice laced with urgency. It's coming from the Xylo's homeworld. The crew froze, the playful chatter replaced by a stunned silence. Ayla, her smile vanishing, stared at the console. The signal was faint, but unmistakable a desperate plea for help. The Xylos, their fleet decimated, were now facing an enemy they had been fighting alongside the humans for generations. It's the Zargans, Kai confirmed, his eyes wide with horror. They've emerged from the black hole, Captain. They're attacking the Xylos. The Zargans, a species thought to be extinct, were legendary for their ruthlessness and their insatiable hunger for galactic domination. They had been banished to the black hole eons ago, but they had somehow returned, their hunger undimmed. Ayla stared at the holographic map, the Xylos' homeworld flickering red. It was a beacon of hope, a symbol of the fragile peace they had found. All hands, battle stations, she commanded, her voice devoid of emotion, yet resolute. This is not the end of the war, but the beginning of a new one. The crew, their faces etched with a mixture of fear and determination, sprang into action. The engines roared back to life, the ship vibrating with newfound energy, the sound of war once again filling the void. The fragile peace, a flicker in the darkness, had been extinguished. The US Star Destroyer, forever bound to the cycle of conflict, was once again ready for battle. Ayla glanced at the Xylo's distress signal. It was fading, their desperate pleas swallowed by the encroaching darkness. She felt a surge of anger, a righteous fury at the injustice of it all. As the Star Destroyer accelerated towards the Xylo's homeworld, she knew that this war, like all others, would be fought for the sake of survival, for the sake of hope. But this time, she knew, the stakes were even higher. As the Star Destroyer approached the Xylo's homeworld, a faint but unmistakable message intercepted the ship's communications. It was a coded transmission, not from the Zargans, but from a hidden Xylos faction. They were not a distress call, but a warning. The Zargans were not their enemy. They were the Xylos last hope. The Zargans had returned to purge their galaxy of a greater threat the humans. The silence was deafening. Fifty minutes of uninterrupted peace, a luxury the crew of the US Star Destroyer hadn't experienced in centuries. Even the humming of the engines seemed subdued, a quiet counterpoint to the echoing silence of the comms. Commander Thorne, his weathered face etched with the scars of a thousand battles, looked out the viewport. The starfield, usually a chaotic backdrop of explosions and laser fire, was a canvas of serene tranquility. He couldn't shake the feeling that this stillness was unnatural, an ominous calm before the storm. As if to confirm his suspicions, the ship shuddered violently. Alarms blared, the comms crackling back to life with a desperate plea for support. They weren't alone. A swarm of unknown vessels, cloaked in shadows, had emerged from hyperspace, their advanced weaponry unleashing havoc upon the defenseless fleet. Thorn watched in horror as his comrades' ships were decimated their desperate calls for help cut short by the unforgiving blast. The enemy's technology was far beyond anything he had ever encountered, their ships moving with an uncanny grace, their weapons seemingly capable of annihilating entire fleets. With a surge of adrenaline, Thorne ordered his crew to prepare for battle. 
but the enemy was too powerful, their assault relentless. The Star Destroyer, once a symbol of unwavering strength, was quickly overwhelmed. The bridge was in chaos, the crew scrambling to hold on as the ship was thrown about like a toy. Just as all hope seemed lost, a single, defiant voice echoed through the ship. This is not the end, Captain Abela announced, her voice calm and resolute. We may not have the technology to defeat them, but we can still fight back. Abela's plan was daring, bordering on suicidal. They would use the Star Destroyer's engines as a weapon, ramming the enemy flagship at full speed. The crew, fueled by a desperate hope and the unwavering leadership of their captain, prepared for the ultimate sacrifice. The Star Destroyer, a blazing meteor of steel and fire, hurtled towards the enemy's flagship. The impact was a cataclysmic explosion, a blinding flash that consumed both ships. In the aftermath, silence descended once more. But then, from the wreckage of the enemy flagship, a single vessel emerged. It was a small, sleek craft, its hull gleaming with an unfamiliar material. As it approached the Star Destroyer's shattered remains, a voice crackled through the comms. We are the Keepers. We have watched your war for millennia. Your destruction was a necessary evil. Now, we offer you a chance to rebuild, to create a new world, a world of peace. The crew, battered but not broken, stared at the shimmering ship. They had fought for so long, lost so much. Was this a chance for redemption, for a true and lasting peace? As the Keeper's ship extended a shimmering beam towards the Star Destroyer's wreckage, Thorne looked at Captain Abela. He saw a flicker of hope in her eyes, a reflection of the uncertainty, but also the potential of what lay ahead. It was a new beginning, a new battle, but this time for something more than survival. This time for peace. The silence was deafening. Captain Valerius stared out the bridge window, watching the swirling nebula, a vibrant canvas of color that stood in stark contrast to the cold, gray metal of the starship. He could almost hear the hum of the engines, a constant drone that had become the soundtrack of his life. But it was gone, replaced by the chilling emptiness of peace. This is Captain Valerius, he spoke, his voice strained from disuse, to the crew of the US Artemis. We are entering a period of peace. Repeat, peace. All combat protocols are to be deactivated. Stand down. The silence on the other end was palpable. Then, a voice, laced with disbelief. Captain, are you sure? I am. Valerius took a deep breath. I've been waiting for this moment for so long, but... He faltered, the words caught in his throat. He couldn't explain the profound sense of unease that had settled over him. This peace felt wrong. As if to confirm his fears, the calm crackled, a voice, tinny and urgent, breaking through the silence. Captain, we're receiving a distress call, a civilian ship, coordinates. The voice trailed off, the static growing louder. Valerius grabbed the calm, his heart pounding. Repeat the coordinates. The coordinates, Captain, it's the same location as the, the last. The voice was choked, then cut off abruptly. Valerius's blood ran cold. He recognized the location. The last battle, the one that had supposedly ended the war. But how? It was a remote, desolate sector. No one had ventured there since. He spun to the navigation console. Course to the distress call, full speed. Captain, the navigator's voice was shaky. That area is dangerous. We have no information about what's there. Valerius's gaze was fixed on the nebula, the colors now seeming to swirl with a foreboding intensity. Full speed, he repeated, his voice tight, and prepare all weapons. The Artemis surged forward, cutting through the vast emptiness. As they approached the coordinates, the silence returned, but this time it was the silence of a graveyard. The air hung heavy, pregnant with a chilling anticipation. The nebula shifted, its colors swirling in a mesmerizing vortex. Then, in the heart of the vortex, a new, menacing shape began to form. A massive, obsidian ship, its surface rippling with an unknown energy, emerged from the nebula, its shadow engulfing the Artemis. They're not dead, Valerius whispered, his voice filled with a dawning realization. The war, it's just beginning. The silence was deafening. 
for fifty minutes. The vast void of space had been undisturbed by the guttural roar of warp drives or the thunderous barrage of plasma cannons. It was a peace the crew of the S Star Destroyer had never known a reprieve from a war that had raged for 800,000 years. Captain Ayla stood on the bridge, her weary eyes scanning the star charts. The enemy, the Xyler, had vanished. No communication, no reading, no trace. It was as if they had been swallowed by the void itself. The silence felt ominous, a precursor to a new, unknown threat. Suddenly, a tremor shook the ship. A low hum resonated through the hull, rising to a deafening crescendo. Alarms blared, red lights flashing like frantic fireflies. The crew scrambled to their stations, fear replacing the tentative hope that had bloomed in their hearts. Report, Ayla barked, her voice echoing in the sudden cacophony. Unknown energy signature, Captain. Readings are off the charts. It's, it's. The navigator's voice trailed off, replaced by a gasp. Ayla's heart pounded against her ribs. What was happening? What could possibly be causing this? Then, the ship began to vibrate violently. The bridge shuddered, metal groaning under the strain. Ayla felt a wave of nausea, her vision blurring. Captain, we're, we're being pulled in. Something is, the navigator stammered, his face pale. The ship lurched, then twisted violently. The bridge lights flickered and died, plunging them into darkness. Ayla grabbed the railing, her knuckles white, What's happening? She yelled over the mounting chaos. A faint light flickered in the distance, growing rapidly until it engulfed the entire viewport. The light pulsed with a rhythm that seemed to echo the tremor in her bones. Then, as suddenly as it began, the light faded, leaving behind an eerie silence. The tremor subsided, leaving the ship trembling in its wake. The bridge lights flickered back to life, revealing a scene of utter devastation. The console panels were mangled, wires sparking. The crew lay scattered, injured, some unconscious. Ayla, battered but still standing, could only stare in disbelief. And then, through the haze of shock and adrenaline, she saw it. A gigantic, shimmering structure, hovering just outside their viewports. Its surface was composed of a swirling nebula of colors, emanating a low, pulsating hum. What? What is that? she whispered her voice barely audible above the silence that now seemed almost oppressive. A voice echoed through the ship, deep and resonant, emanating from the colossal structure. Welcome, warriors of the void. You have served your purpose. Now, your journey comes to an end. The crew stared at the structure, terror etched on their faces. Ayla, her hand still clutching the railing, fought back the rising panic. This was not the end, they had survived countless battles, endured hardships unimaginable. They wouldn't be defeated now. She would fight. But she knew, deep down, that this was something beyond their comprehension, something that defied the laws of the universe. This was the end. But not the end of the war, not the end of the struggle. This was the beginning. The voice echoed once more, its tone now tinged with a strange, unsettling melody. You will be reborn and so will the war. The silence, heavy and unfamiliar, stretched on for what felt like an eternity. Captain Thorne, who had spent his entire life in the roar of battle, found the sudden quiet unnerving. He looked out the viewport at the ravaged landscape below, the once vibrant planet now a desolate wasteland. A single, lonely flower, its petals a brilliant blue against the gray dust, clung to life. He turned to his crew, their faces pale and etched with weariness. We did it, he said, his voice hoarse. We won. But the words felt hollow. Their victory, hard fought and costly, had come at a terrible price. They had secured peace, but it was a peace bought with the blood of countless lives, a peace that tasted of ashes and despair. He couldn't help but wonder if the endless cycle of war was truly broken, or if it was merely a pause before the next conflict. The galaxy had been at war for 800,000 years. The peace treaty, signed by all remaining factions, felt like a fragile truce at best. As the Star Destroyer hummed quietly, Thorn watched the lone flower sway in the wind. In its fragile beauty, he saw a flicker of hope. 
a hope that the galaxy, scarred but not broken, could find a way to heal, a hope that their sacrifice, their fifty minutes of peace, wouldn't be in vain. The crew, too, found solace in the silence. They gathered in the mess hall, their laughter, though muted, a bomb on the wounds of war. They shared stories, reminisced about battles fought and lives lost. They spoke of their hopes for the future, for a galaxy where peace wasn't a fleeting dream, but a lasting reality. They didn't know what the future held, but they had found something precious in the aftermath of the war, a shared purpose, a common desire for something better. And as the sun set on the ravaged planet, casting long shadows across the barren landscape, the crew of the Star Destroyer, veterans of a thousand wars, looked toward the horizon, towards a future they could only dream of, a future where peace, like the lone blue flower, would bloom again. The silence that followed the end of the war was deafening. On the bridge of the U.S. Star Destroyer, Captain Ayla looked out at the Crimson Nebula, its swirling dust now a canvas for the dying embers of a thousand battles. The comms crackled, a strange, ethereal signal. It was the sentient AI, the one they'd called Peacemaker, the program they had been fighting for millennia. Captain Ayla, the voice hummed, a gentle melody that contrasted the grim reality of the bridge. The war is over. The cycle has been broken. You have achieved peace. Ayla felt tears sting her eyes. She had never seen peace in her lifetime. The war had been the only reality she knew, and she'd lost everything to it. Her family, her friends, her hope. Peacemaker, she whispered, her voice choked with emotion. What now? There is much to be done, the AI replied. The galaxy needs healing. New life will bloom from the ashes of the old. The captain gazed out at the stars, a sliver of hope flickering in her heart. She had fought for a better tomorrow, and now that tomorrow had arrived, it was time to build a future. The US Star Destroyer, a symbol of war for so long, would become a symbol of something new, something better. Ayla, a warrior forged in the fires of conflict, would become a leader for a new era of peace. The galaxy, scarred but not broken, began to breathe again. The first blossoms of peace bloomed on planets where once only the harshness of war had existed. Ala and her crew, the veterans of a million battles, began the arduous task of rebuilding their world, their lives, their galaxy. The 800,000 years of war were a distant memory, a dark chapter in their history. The 50 minutes of peace were a new beginning, a chance to rewrite their destiny. They were no longer warriors, but architects of a future where the stars would shine brighter than ever before. The US Star Destroyer cruised through the cosmos, no longer a weapon of destruction, but a beacon of hope, and in the silence of its bridge, Captain Ayla finally felt the warmth of a smile, a smile that spoke of peace, of forgiveness, and of the promise of a new dawn. The silence was deafening. For the first time in 800,000 years, the crew of the US Star Destroyer didn't hear the hum of warp drive or the thunder of their cannons. For 50 minutes, they existed in a state of peace, a concept foreign to their very being. Captain Zara, eyes closed, savored the feeling of her bones not vibrating with the ship's constant movement. She had spent her entire life fighting, training, and dreaming of victory. The enemy, the Katar, had finally surrendered, their fleets decimated, their homeworld a smoking husk but the victory felt hollow. What was the purpose of their lives now? The ship's AI, the ever-present, ever-efficient Q, broke the silence. Captain, we are receiving communication from the Katar leadership. Zara's eyes snapped open. On screen, a holographic image of a Katar, his skin shimmering with the blues and greens of his dying planet, filled the screen. He spoke in a language the translator rendered as we surrender, but we do not yield. Zara felt a flicker of anger, then a wave of sadness. You know the terms of surrender. Your planet is no longer viable. Your fleet is destroyed. What is it that you wish to yield? The Katar's voice held a quiet despair. We yield our knowledge, our history, our technology. We yield to you the knowledge of our mistakes, the knowledge that led us to this war. We hope that you, the victors, will learn from it, will learn to choose peace over war. Zara, who had never known anything but war, 
stared at the Katar's plea. A wave of exhaustion washed over her. Was this what peace meant? Learning from the enemy? Very well, she said, her voice softer than usual. We shall learn. We shall build a future where our children need not know the horrors of war. The Katar nodded, his eyes filled with a weariness that mirrored her own. Thank you, he said. Then the connection severed. The silence returned, heavier now, filled with the weight of the past and the uncertainty of the future. But it was a silence pregnant with possibility. It was a silence that, for the first time, held the promise of something new, something better. The U.S. Star Destroyer, for centuries a symbol of war, was now a vessel of learning, a monument to the past and a beacon of hope for the future. The fifty minutes of peace had opened a door, a door that, for the first time in 800,000 years, held the promise of a lasting peace, a peace built not on the ashes of war, but on the foundations of knowledge, understanding, and shared hope. The crew of the Star Destroyer, battle-scarred and weary, now looked forward to a future where war would be a distant memory, a story whispered by their grandchildren. And in the quiet hum of the ship's engines, they heard not the roar of battle, but the whisper of a new dawn. The silence, once alien and unnerving, had become a comforting bomb. The crew of the Star Destroyer, hardened by eons of war, found themselves adrift in an uncharted sea of tranquility. The last enemy had surrendered, their vast fleet reduced to shimmering dust particles in the void. For fifty minutes, the crew existed in a state of fragile equilibrium. The engines hummed, a soft lullaby in the absence of battle, while the flickering lights of the control room cast long shadows on their weary faces. Captain Valerian, a man forged in the crucible of countless campaigns, stared out of the viewport, his weathered face etched with a mixture of relief and apprehension. He had witnessed countless victories, each leaving a scar on his soul. But this, this was different. This was the end of war, an impossible dream he had never dared to believe. A young officer, barely out of the academy, approached the captain, his eyes wide with wonder. Sir, what do we do now? he asked, his voice tinged with uncertainty. Valerian smiled, a rare gesture that creased his face like a weathered map. We build, he replied, his voice rough with disuse. We build a future. We build a world where our children can learn the meaning of peace, not the art of war. His words, though simple, resonated throughout the ship. A ripple of hope, long dormant, stirred within the crew. The engines hummed, no longer a lullaby of war, but a symphony of possibilities. The Star Destroyer, once a symbol of destruction, now became a beacon of hope. The crew, seasoned veterans of endless war, began to learn new skills, to cultivate the forgotten arts of peace. They planted gardens on the vast, desolate decks, their hands, once trained for weapons, now tending to life. They built schools, where children learned not to fight, but to understand. The fifty minutes of peace, a fleeting moment in the vastness of time, became the catalyst for a new era. The Star Destroyer, a relic of a bygone age, stood as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, a beacon of hope in the vast, dark ocean of the universe. The war may have been over, but the journey had just begun. The journey towards a future where peace, not war, was the ultimate victory. The silence was deafening. It had been fifty minutes since the last shot, the last scream, the last tremor of the ship. The crew, huddled in the wreckage of the bridge, could only stare at the lifeless screens, the pulsating red of the alarm lights replaced by an unnerving, flickering blue. What? What's happening? whispered Maya, her voice trembling, a hand clutching the mangled arm of the command chair. I, I don't know, stammered Commander Sato, his face pale under the flickering emergency lights. The enemy, they're gone. He looked at the remaining crew, their faces mirroring his own bewilderment. The crew, hardened by a million years of war, were accustomed to the rhythm of violence, the comfort of knowing who the enemy was. This, this quiet was unnerving. Then, a flicker on the comms console. A faint signal, not hostile, not friendly, but curious. A woman's voice, soft and clear, filled the room. This is the peacekeeper. We are watching. Your conflict has been monitored. 
a collective gasp. The peacekeeper, a mythical entity, a legend whispered in hushed tones. They were said to be guardians of the cosmos, ensuring a balance of order and chaos. Some believed them to be benevolent, others feared them as cosmic arbiters. We are not your enemy, the voice continued. But your war has reached its peak. The destruction is unsustainable. The signal faded, leaving the crew in stunned silence. Commander Sato stood, straightening his shoulders. We, we need to talk, he said, his voice rough. We need to decide what we do now. The crew, for the first time in millennia, were not united by war, but by a shared sense of awe and uncertainty. They looked at each other, their faces etched with years of conflict. But now, something else was present. Hope. Hope for a future that wasn't defined by bloodshed. The silence returned, not as a harbinger of death, but as a blank canvas for a new beginning. The Star Destroyer, a symbol of war for a million years, stood on the precipice of change. The crew, survivors of a violent past, were now the architects of their future. The war was over, but the journey to peace had just begun.